Hi, one of the things you may notice is that I have a very silly, asinine looking microphone here. Uh, one of the issues with these videos while I'm working is I have to hold the camera right near me so that you can actually hear what I'm saying. And if I'm, th that doesn't really work. I don't feel like holding a camera while I'm soldering or showing you things. And frankly, you shouldn't be coming to this channel for eye candy. I mean, if you're sitting in front of a computer and you want to look at something that's incredibly appealing to you, Google Ryan Gosling. Google Joaquin Phoenix. What the fuck are you doing here? But anyway, besides that, uh, the topic of today's video are good tools. Why you really need them. There's one simple reason. There is one simple reason that you need good tools above every other reason. And that is that it allows you to grow. Now, there are many other reasons that you want good tools. You want them to last. You don't want them to die in the middle of a repair. They make your life easier. That, 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 blah, blah, blah. But the real best reason, and the reason that very few people talk about, is that good tools allow you to grow as a technician. They allow you to learn more, and they allow you to move to the next level. And one of the biggest myths, one of the biggest pieces of bullshit that people tell themselves is when... I need the good tools, I'll get them. And that never happens because you never need the good tools. Let's give me, let me give you a good example. Let's say that you need to replace a backlight fuse. So you buy the cheapest, shittiest IUE station for like 120 bucks on Amazon used to be able to do that. Then one day you need to replace some type of QFN package. Now again, you spent the 120 bucks in the IUE piece of crap, instead of spending six or seven hundred dollars in the good hackle one that you could probably slay dragons with. Now here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna be able to do those little jobs in those small packages, but then you're gonna have to replace a QFP one day because somebody's keyboard is not working and their mouse is not working. You're gonna have to replace a chip that's this big. And you're gonna use that piece of dog shit that you bought for 120 bucks. And do you think it's gonna let you take that chip off? No, no, no. You're going to keep that thing there like this with the heat all the way on. It's going to be just hot enough to boil everything around the chip, but not hot enough to actually heat up the heat sink pad underneath it to remove it. So what's going to happen is that you're going to burn everything. You're going to fuck everything up because you don't have the tool. Now, here's, wh here's the part where I say you're never going to need it. The customer is not going to want to wait for you to buy a good tool to do the job. They're not going to want to wait a week or two weeks in many cases for you to get the good tool, to get the good accessories, because you can't buy this shit at a local Radio Shack. You cannot go to Best Buy and buy a Hacko FR801. So what you're going to do is you're going to have to give them a wait time. And then they're going to say, fuck that, and they're going to take it to somebody else, probably like me, where they actually have the tools to do these jobs. And then your need for that tool has gone away because the customer has gone away. And since the need for the tool has gone away, so has the desire to learn, so has the requirements that you have that tool and for most people it's just eh, I guess we just couldn't do it and they make an excuse for why they couldn't have done the job and they move on they don't grow but if here's what I would do in that situation now again as I've told you you need to get by with what you have I don't think you should invest in bullshit that you're not gonna need and I don't think that you should put money all your money into one thing if that that's literally all the money you have what I did is I said, I'm not going to buy this cheap shit. I have one good tool. If I have to replace a backlight fuse or a 0402 resistor because the current sense circuit is broken and it's not viewing the charger or some stupid shit like that, I'm going to do that with my $100 Hacko, just my basic Hacko soldering iron, that basic $100 iron. And again, in the other video, I showed you how you can replace a 0402 package using that basic iron. Now, what I did is I decided instead of spending 120 bucks or 140 bucks in a shitty rework station. I'm going to do as many jobs as I can with this soldering iron and save up my money. And five or six years ago, I saved up something like six or seven hundred bucks. And then once I had saved all of that up from all the jobs I did with the cheap tool, I used that money to buy the good one. And when I got the good one, I'll be honest with you. I had no fucking idea how to use that thing. I had never done a motherboard level, component level repair with that tool where I actually removed a QFP or anything before. And, but when the time came that I thought, I'm ready to learn this, I'm ready to do this, I'm ready to try this, and the customer was there, instead of thinking to myself, eh, there's nothing I can do, this is the only tool I have, I was able to move to the next level. When I thought I was ready and the opportunity presented itself, there was no bottleneck in my infrastructure. My infrastructure was there so that I was able to take on that job, 
and learn how to do it. The good tool allowed me to grow instead of stay where I was. And when you get bad tools, again, when you get crappy tools, they don't allow you to grow. They don't allow you to learn. And that is the biggest crime of having shitty tools. Now, Another good thing that good tools do is they remove excuses. Again, if somebody comes in and I have to replace the, you know, the, the keyboard controller chip, uh, I, then I'm going to be thinking to myself, eh, I'd be able to do it, but I just can't remove that thing. I've made an excuse for myself. Now, one of the things that I find a lot of people doing on this YouTube channel when they're commenting or they're sending me emails or they're sending me messages or they're calling me, they're coming up with all these excuses as to why they can't do things. They're coming up with all these bullshit excuses as to why they can't learn. And in the beginning, I thought a lot of of these excuses were bad. I thought these excuses were bullshit. They were crap. But what I'm realizing with myself is that excuses are good. Excuses lead to learning. You see, every time I make an excuse as to why I cannot do something, I can't do this because I don't have that. Okay. Let me get that. I can't do this because I don't have the schematic. Okay. Let me find the schematic. I can't do this because I don't know where those things go on the board. Okay. Fuck the excuse. Let me find a board view. I can't do this because I can't measure the crystal. Okay, I have something that can measure a crystal. I can't do this because, you know, you, you get the point. There are all these different things where I will tell myself why I can't learn it, why I can't do it. And what my excuses have allowed me to do is, is organically create a curriculum for myself. Again, one of the reasons that this particular field interests me is because there's absolutely no one out there teaching it. There's no, nobody out there to show you any of this. You pretty much have to teach yourself and you have to have a decent knowledge of electronics to actually put everything together and recognize how everything works and actually get anything done productively. And that's what f I find fun about it. That's why I think this is an interesting project. Personally, the idea that, you know, R9731 and R9714 create a 12 volt to 3 volt divider to turn on the light of your screen, that's, that, that, that's fucking boring to me. What's interesting is the process of figuring it out and the doing the detective work involved when there is an entire industry based around telling people to go fuck themselves when they want more information on how these products work. And what I've noticed about actually getting good tools, what I've noticed about killing each one of my excuses one by one, is I've created a legitimate curriculum for myself. When I look at where I was five years ago and then where I was four years ago, or when I look at where I was four years ago versus where I was one year ago, I am, I am legitimately amazed that somebody that is as, uh, for lack of a better way to say it, as dumb as I am, has actually figured this much shit out on their own. And that's because what I've done every step of the way is I've made an excuse and then I've gotten rid of the excuse. And when I pull out all the excuses, I notice that I actually learned a decent amount just in the process of getting rid of my excuses. One of the things that I notice is that in the process of getting rid of all of these excuses, I actually learn a lot because I have to learn with the next thing. I have to figure out, okay, now I have this. Well, I measured that and it still doesn't work. Oh, apparently I have to be able to measure this other thing. Well, I don't have anything to do that. I guess I can't do it. Excuse. You just get the next tool and you measure it. And you learn. And as you go, you learn more and more and more. When you have good tools, everything starts to become apparent to you. And you start to realize where the bottlenecks in your system are. And as you get rid of all the bottlenecks in your system, as you get rid of all the excuses that you have as to why you cannot learn something, why you cannot do something, you really do start learning in an amazing, unique way. Roy Hendrickson told me when I was 17 years old working at Avatar studios that there's nothing college can teach you that you cannot learn yourself if you really want to learn it. Let me say that again. There's nothing college can teach you that you cannot teach yourself if you really want to learn it. He told me that eight years ago when I was a little snot-nosed teenager that wound up, you know, quitting early because I didn't, I didn't like certain things about the job. And anyway, he, he told me a lot of things that made a lot of sense. And this was a guy who really was able to teach himself everything on his own. He didn't have a college degree and he was building, you know, a head phone mixers, custom amplifiers, and it, he would take away all the excuses. I don't have this component. I'm going to buy this. I'm going to convince the owner to give me all this money to buy all these components. I can't figure out this circuit. I'm going to stay here until five in the morning all week until I figure it out. I don't have this thing to measure it. I'm going to buy it right now. And he wound up making a kick-ass fucking system that kicked the crap out of the one that they were using. He took the, the, the Nemesis headphone amplifier system that they had, and he built something that was ten times better, was cheaper to make, that performed better. That, that clients like more. Again, he did this without education, without somebody showing him everything as they went. And he did that by getting rid of the excuses every step of the way. That's what I seek to do, and that's what I seek to get you to do. And you do that, first off, 
by getting good tools.